Um, so before we get into investment tips, you have a personal reason for getting into the business. What made you choose this path in this profession? Well, for me, uh, I didn't grow up with money. So I grew up on the south side of Chicago, nine of us in one home. Money was uh, scarce. So I want to know, learn more about it, like how it works, how to attract it, and more importantly, how to keep it. Mm -hmm. So I structured my education around uh, learning more about money, and the more I learned, the more I realized how much other people don't know about it, especially my millennial peers. And it's scary. So true. Yeah, and it's scary so because we, this, we have to make the most financial decisions of our lives. You know, buying our first home, starting a family, paying down student loan debt, and all that. So I knew they didn't have the help, so I started a firm where I do financial planning for millennials. And so many of those issues, I mean, before the age of 25, can really affect you for the next 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah, the rest of your life. Yeah, so. all right. And certainly inspiring, I think, a story that many of us can relate to if you're, you know, coming from a regular working class family. So um, now let's actually discuss investing. You're saying that over 30% of millennials think that cash is their best investment. What do you mean by that? Um, so there's a study that says 30% of millennials think that their best place to park their money for the next 10 years is in cash. And one, cash is not an investment, right? Cash doesn't grow. And there's this thing called inflation, which we'll get into uh, <laughs> why um, uh, you're actually losing money by staying in cash. Okay, so what can be the outcome if people don't invest early? Well, especially for our generation, like, you know, Social Security is undetermined in the future. Pensions have been replaced with 401ks. So we might be the first generation that is solely responsible for our retirement. So if we don't start early, we could be looking at having to work the rest of our lives, which is a scary uh, uh, Yeah, so, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no question. So, Corlin, how does uh, um, inflation affect investing? So let's talk about inflation for a second, right? Sure. Inflation is the cost of goods and services around us increasing in value, so the dollar is decreasing in value. So let me ask you a question. Um, how much do you think $100 was worth 40 years ago? Um, uh, $100. Well, $100 uh, 40, years, 40 years ago, how much do you think it's worth today? That's a good question. Probably I'd probably say it's definitely. $72.36. I'd probably say around $80. $24. No! So, yeah, so over a 40-year period, you lost 75% of your value if you didn't invest. So I think if you work 40 years, yeah, you have some money saved, but 75% of it will be gone just due to inflation alone. Wow. Scary, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. You say it with a smile, though, for <laughs> I know. Well, we're like, I get uh, you're a charming cat, but that's not a smiling situation. When we're just uh, People are learning okay. now. So basically you're saying working and saving is not enough. You got to do more and invest. You got to do more. So I love to give my clients this statistic. So if you save $300 a month for 40 years, you have $144,000 saved, which is great, right? But if you invest $300 a month for 40 years, you have $1.7 so, Invest so, it where? How? Like in your Ooh, company's four one k. Like your, your company's four one k. Just put it, put it, try to have it. a match. And, yeah, you know, have a match. Then forget it. You, you, you can be a, become a millionaire on accident if you just invest three hundred dollars a month. Uh, for 40 years. What's my option if my company doesn't have a 401k? Uh, Roth uh, IRA Roth or IRA. some type of traditional IRA. You still can put it right $5,500 a month. I mean, $5,500 a year. So that's still a substantial amount of money to be putting away. And then you can open a traditional brokerage account if you don't have a 401k. Corlin, this is so important. And I, I love that you had the foresight to see that this is something that yeah. People usually, and this is my biggest regret at the age I'm at, which is still young, but still I, young. I wish I did this in my 20s. Like, I wish I could have it back in that time. I was just spending because I had it, and I don't have that anymore, and I'm playing catch-up on that front. And you think, because you don't think you're going to live forever, but you got to have the mentality that you're going to live forever, so you need to have something in place, not only for you, but for your offspring and for those to come after you. You need to build for what's coming in the future, not in the right now, and that's something I developed as I got into my 30s. Uh, so I want to ask you this, Corlin, and to summarize everything that we talked about here, because we talked about a lot of great things, uh, put it all in perspective for us here. Um, well, one, cash is not an investment. Um, the best asset that we have as millennials is um, time. So start investing as early as possible. And, um, you know, don't spend all the money that you have. Uh, you know, just saving it was just saving. It's not going to cut it. We have to work and invest. All right, there we go. Thank you so much, Cortland. Thank it's you for having certainly me today. like it's shocking stuff, but it's stuff that we need to hear, we need to talk about, and get, hey, get started at age 18. Yeah. <laughs> start, start sooner if you can. Yeah. This guy took a situation where it didn't look like it was going to pan out well for him, yeah. took the bull by the horns, and he sits here today, not only winning in life, but helping people along the mm -hmm. same path. Mm -hmm. It's really cool stuff, my friend. For Appreciate more it. financial tips, head over to cofieldadvisors.com. That's simple.